Um, all right. Well, from, uh, you know, one undisciplined, potentially low IQ fighter to another, we have Jacob Malkoon versus Cody Rundage. Um, this is going to be a 185 pound uh, fight right here. Jacob Malkoon, he is 72, 3 and 2 in his last five from Australia. He's facing off against Cody Brundage, who's eight and five, two and three in his last five. In terms of the height, Cody does have a four inch height height advantage. Reach about the same. Um, just to tell you guys about the odds here for both of them. I mean, Jacob Malkoon opened up at minus five fifty, and it kind of you know went down a little bit, but now it's back to minus five fifty. Um, man, everybody's kind of fading Cody Brundage. Um, God, I mean, I've watched, I've, I probably watched a little too much of Cody Brundage over the last few years, to be honest. I mean, I feel like every time I watch this guy, he's always on TV. I don't know how, but he just keeps on getting these fights. Um, he, he is the classic guy who just has no fight IQ whatsoever. I mean, I don't know how this guy fights in there. I mean, he, if you actually watch his fights, he, he does pretty well, you know, in the beginning. I mean, like he. You could kind of say that in his last three losses, he had his moments in each of those last three losses. I mean, uh, with uh, McCall, when he fought McCall Olajajic, I mean, he, he took down McCall and then McCall just freaking reversed him and started, and started just ground and pounding him on top. Like, that's, that's crazy. Like, I don't know how you lose like that. And then he, when he fought Rodolfo Rivera, I mean, he's, he's kind of holding his own. I mean, I think he's doing pretty well. Uh, but then he just got subbed by Rodolfo. Uh, and then... Man, that last fight against SD Dumas, uh, that literally a, a street fighter that the UFC just found off the street. Like, <laughs> literally, this dude, Cody Brundage, was doing kind of well. And then <laughs> this dude pulled guillotine. <laughs> like, I was like, I just don't know, like, what his decision-making process is in terms of, like, what he thinks about in the fights. Like, he had a clear path to victory in that SD Dumas fight. Just grappled him. Just like Josh Frem literally out-grappled SD Dumas. And Cody Brundage couldn't do that. So, I mean, it just tells you that, man, Cody Brundage, I, I don't know if he has – he's UFC caliber. It's, it's kind of uh, disappointing. But Jacob Malkoon, I mean, you know, he, he does have some good pace pressure. You know, he has, he's a pretty good grappler. He does some takedowns per 15 minutes. While that may be an amazing stat, it kind of shows me that he, he does lack the top control kind of game to kind of keep the fight on the ground once he takes you down. So while his pace and pressure is great in terms of getting those seven takedowns per 15 minutes, he kind of works for them a lot, right? I mean, he's 44% uh, takedown accuracy there. But I think that that pace and pressure will be the difference here. Um, you know, Cody does have some power. He's the wrestler with some power. But you just can't – you cannot trust Cody at any cost at this point. I mean, I think he probably has the worst IQ in that division. Um, the only hesitation that I have right now is that Jacob Malkoon, I mean, is he a minus five fifty kind of fighter? I think that I think that those odds are just mainly people fading uh, Cody Brundage at this point. Honestly, I think they're just literally fading him against anybody that put just because he literally lost to a street fighter his last fight. So, um, I, I right now, you know, I will probably lean towards passing um, because Jacob Malkoon made minus five fifty. That's that's really steep right there. You're you're kind of you know, getting into uncharted territory in terms of, you know, is this parlay going to add some juice to, I mean, is this fight going to add some juice to my parlay? And is it a guarantee? Uh, but I'll probably pass for now. But, you know, if I could see, this is basically a Malcooner pass for me. I'm, I'm not playing Cody Burnish at all. Uh, so that's the breakdown for that. Uh, Alex, what, what do you think about this uh, Burnish versus Malcoon fight right here? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I definitely agree with uh, everything you said there, James. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight was that uh, Brundage's fight against um, Cedric Dumas, uh, he was a 190 favorite. Um, and <laughs> if you watch that fight and you put money on Brundage, you, it, 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 you would have probably been so frustrated because that that fight was, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It was a all-time... Uh, bad performance um Brundage looked gassed um after getting grappled by uh Dumas and I don't know like that I don't even know how that happened so um 
Yeah, like with you, um, it, it's either Malcoon or Pass. And like looking at, at the um, odds, that's a way too steep a price to pay because, um, again, as you said, like Brundage has like good moments where he looks uh, decent. Um, but, you know, with Malcoon, I'm watching him fight. Um, he can be hittable. Um, I like that he likes to uh, bring constant pressure. He likes to be in your face. Um, but uh, in his last fight against Maximov, uh, he actually got knocked down by him. Um, but uh, he was able to take uh, Maximov down like uh, a ton of times. Uh, he has this like move where he'll kind of utilize the uh, cage, like he'll push off against the cage to kind of like like use the cage as extra leverage to take um, the opponent down, which I thought was pretty interesting. But I mean, as you said, like Maximov was just able to get up like a ton of times. So um, he's not able to like pin you down and re uh, get get top control. So um yeah i'm probably gonna pass on this fight i think the price is uh, a little bit too high um but yeah definitely not putting any money on brundage here definitely gerard what do you think about brundage versus malcoon at this point i think uh cody brundage it looks like he pretends to be a wrestler when i'm watching his his fights and like that dumas fight I don't know. He he just gives up positions. It looks like during the fight, he just looks like he gives up. He I don't see the dog in him. Whereas uh, Jacob Malcoon, he's he's ready to make it a dog fight. He's just game for it. We saw that he has a chin. Um, he's strong and he he ac he actually wrestles. He doesn't pretend to be a wrestler. Um, yeah, the these odds. Yeah, I think. The minus 500s from people who got burned from Brundage. So it may kind of make sense. Um, I would go with the guy that doesn't give up, has that dog in him here. But yeah, minus 500 is kind of kind of iffy. But yeah, I'm same here. It's, it's either Malcoon or Pass for me. Sounds good. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement here. Um, yeah, just no, no money on Brandish guys. I, I think that's, <laughs> I, th I think that's something that we can all agree on right there. 